little bit more time to reflect on the implications of her recent public statements concerning Christianity and Islam. Uh, this teacher put a, a Facebook post saying that Christians and Muslims worship the same God. And she's also taken to wearing an Islamic headscarf on campus in what she describes as a gesture of embodied solidarity with Muslims. And now, it's interesting that she's actually taking this stance with the headscarf, a little bit more on that in a moment, but it's also interesting how it's, it's, it's okay to talk about Christianity as long as you are pushing an agenda there in the mainstream media. Sort of like how it's Christmas, so the nativity story is of course being used uh, to push for acceptance of Syrian refugees. This was CNN writer Jay Perini. He says that those who care about the practice of their faith keep Jesus front and center, which means focusing on his status as a refugee comparable to today's immigrants. Now, it isn't charity when you are forcing people to do it. But back to this interesting take on uh, wearing the hijab in solidarity. Now, this is a, a report is very interesting. I don't have time to get into the full article, but I highly recommend you look at it. Um, it comes from two Muslim women and they say, we actually ask you not to wear the hijab in the name of interfaith solidarity. And this article is pretty long and they go down into uh, the history of wearing the headscarf and they break down that it's actually very recent history. And um, they talk about how they were born in the 60s. Uh, they were with open-minded families. They didn't have this rule that they had to cover their hair, but it was actually following the 1979 Iranian revolution. And there was a rise of well-funded Saudi clerics from the majority Sunni sect who started bullying women uh, in an attempt to get them to cover their hair from men and boys. And they go on to say that they wanna challenge the hijab uh, saying that, that, that it's an interpretation of Islam that they reject, that women are a sexual distraction to men who are just weak, and thus they must not be tempted by the sight of women's hair. They said, we don't buy it, and that the ideology promotes a social attitude that absolves men of sexually harassing women and puts the onus on the victim to protect herself by covering up. And so they tell all of those well-meaning women out there who are wanting to wear these headscarves in a show of solidarity to say, you know, don't support this ideology of political Islam that's be actually being practiced by the mullahs or clerics of Iran and Saudi Arabia, the Taliban in Afghanistan and the Islamic State. So that is a very interesting take. I know that we're always calling out uh, so-called feminists here in America who don't seem to care about the oppression of women in other countries. So this was definitely a pretty interesting take. And of course, I will link the article below this video. Now stick around because we've got some very interesting news for you coming right up. Shane Steiner's involvement with InfoWarsLife.com truly happened in an organic way. I went to high school with Shane, his brother, knew his parents well, and he was visiting the office once, hadn't been to the office in years, and said, wow, I notice you're making and selling supplements. Do these really work? Because I've tried a lot of supplements as a, a workout enthusiast, and I really think most of them are hype. And I said, here, take some home, try it. Well, a few weeks later, he came in blown away and said, I want to buy three boxes of this stuff to get my friends and family. It's simply amazing. He said, why does it work so well? And I said, listen, go to InfoWarsLife.com, watch the informational videos with Dr. Group and others. They understand how it all works. I know that it works for me. That's all I understand. The science, the facts, the research, people's testimonials, they're all on InfoWarsLife.com. You can check it out for yourself. I wanted to go to the gym. I wanted to push myself and work out harder. And that led to me being able to come out and do stuff like the barefooting and the surfing and stuff like that, which I've never done. I, I never would have done that uh, two years ago. Shane has said over and over again, more than just libido and energy, it made him want to get into the gym more. It made him want to get in better shape. And believe me, the Steiners have amazing genetics. Uh, his brother is a world champion steer wrestler. His dad, Bobby Steiner, is a famous world champion bull rider. They've got natural genetics. But when you added this to the mix, in Shane's own words, it took him to the next level. Shane noticed the mental clarity. 
Bobby was able to work out longer and gain muscle mass. He's already completely shredded. I gotta admit, for me, the biggest effect has been libido. Now, I've never claimed to have a body like some beach model, but back when I was 20, 22 years old and worked out every day, I looked great. But over the years, and being married, and having three kids, and working 18 hours a day, I gained basically 100 pounds. And it's been a long process of losing that weight in the last four years. But if you look at the photos and the videos of what I looked like four or five years ago versus today, the results are dramatic. I'd already cleaned up my diet, I was working out hard, but I'd only lost about 20 pounds. It was adding the other key ingredients ingredients from InfoWarsLife.com that helped me personally go to the next level and shed another 35 pounds. This has actually made me feel so good that uh, here lately, about a year ago, I started training jujitsu and that kind of led to doing some boxing and kickboxing. I mean, it's, it's amazing that two years ago I was on the couch and couldn't even tie my shoes. And now I'm training with MMA fighters and uh, just doing stuff that I never thought that I'd, I would be doing ever again. So Super Male Vitality has allowed me to do some amazing things. And if it has those kind of effects for me, I know that it will do great things for you. So just try Super Male Vitality. I promise you, you'll love it. And finally, let's look at Anthony Gucciardi, Infowars.com reporter. He also works with Dr. Group and others helping develop the newest, most cutting edge, high quality supplements. Let's take a look at what happened when he tried to barefoot ski for the first time with the Steiners. And remember, we're not making fun of him. He had the will to get in the arena and he's lost more than 10 pounds in the last few years of fat and gained more than 10 pounds of muscle and Anthony chalks it up to super male vitality as well. Bottom line, folks, you want to discover the power of super male vitality and super female vitality for yourself by visiting InfoWarsLife.com today or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139. Well, if you like to sprinkle your holiday with a little bit of cheer, hold that thought because you might be a racist. Now, students have signed a petition to ban the racist song, White Christmas. That's right, white supremacy is everywhere. Now, these were American college students and they, they signed a fictitious petition uh, that was put on by a radio station. And they basically said that this song was an offense to all colored people in its insistence on white being associated with the good and the beautiful. So this was uh, MRC TV reporter, Dan Joseph. And he was using a lot of buzzwords saying white supremacy is everywhere, even in your holiday songs, microaggressions, the need for a safe space away from this horribly offensive song. So this was pronounced several times. And of course, those buzzwords must have worked because they were able to garner 18 signatures in just about an hour. And, you know, I've been out there doing these petitions myself. It's really not that hard to get people to sign petitions if you throw out those buzzwords. Just kind of reels them right in. But you know what? These students aren't going to have to worry about any Christmas, offensive Christmas snow, um, according to whoever, whatever weather channel you pay attention to. Now they're saying that it's going to be the warmest Christmas Eve on record. It'll be unfolding across the eastern U.S. And this is meteorologist Rob England. Uh, he said there's a high probability for record setting warmth and, you know, good luck on any hopes of that white Christmas happening on the east. Meanwhile, on other areas of the globe, they're experiencing extreme cold. Now, a Colorado weather station observed a record low of negative 51 degrees. This was just weeks after politicians met in Paris to combat global warming. And this radio station is located about 100 miles southwest of Denver. They said the temperature was the third lowest the station had recorded in over 50 years. And over the past month, there has been a large surge in Arctic ice growth. This was leading to the largest extent for the date since at least 2004, according to Climate Depot. And of course, this went on all throughout the Paris Climate Conference, where tens of thousands of, of criminals were meeting to decide how to go ahead and tax us in order to save the climate. Um, they want to steal your money, your energy security, and of course, your freedom. 
So politicians are, of course, deliberately rousing this fear of global warming, uh, even though there's evidence of extreme cold out there as well. And this is all in an effort to tax away climate change as if that would even be possible. We know that global warming or climate change branded environmentalism is a hoax designed to wipe out underdeveloped countries' populations, tax Western populations into poverty, and help create a lasting one world government. What is also interesting is that within this hoax is another hoax, the carbon offset scam. Earlier this month concluded the Paris Climate Conference, the COP21. While virtual conferencing technology has been available for years, as well as many other innovative solutions to holding low emissions conferencing, the leaders and organizers of this conference still opted to pile into gas-guzzling, carbon-spewing vehicles and make the trek to Paris, France, in order to enjoy a few weeks of pampering and photo ops. How can the participants of the Paris conference who traveled by private luxury jets, ate at obnoxiously priced restaurants, and slept in luxury hotels possibly claim that this event, or any of their actions outside the conference, qualify as being carbon neutral? That's simple. They all purchase carbon offsets. Does paying this small fee transform a person from being an obvious hypocrite to a consciously clean savior of the planet? The answer, of course, is no. Carbon offsets are nothing more than another globalist racket designed to keep the global warming climate change hoax alive. According to CarbonNeutral.com, carbon offsetting is the use of carbon credits to enable businesses to compensate for their emissions, meet their carbon reduction goals, and support the move to a low-carbon economy. The explanation continues. Carbon offsetting delivers finance to essential renewable energy, forestry, and resource conservation projects which generate reduction in greenhouse gas emissions. In other words, it's a permission slip for corporate polluters and decadent elitists to pollute as they like. Unfortunately for the banksters, politicians, and celebrities who are involved in this con game, carbon offsets have been exposed and documented year after year as being a worthless scam. The trading system was first outlined in 1997 during the Kyoto Protocol. Today, the carbon offset market is not just infested with countless scams, hackers, and con artists, but the offset credits themselves are fraudulent. According to an article published January 30, 2015 by ForeignPolicy.com, entitled The Hack That Warmed the World, back in 2007, a Vatican cardinal stood before cameras and received a certificate declaring the Holy See the world's first carbon-neutral sovereign state. But not one tree of the Vatican climate forest was ever planted. In Africa, some reforestation projects have reportedly sold the same offsets to two or three different buyers. UK regulators announced in November 2013 that they had shut down 19 companies for using offset sales to scam investors out of some $38.7 million. This article discusses not only fraudulent carbon credits, but many different scams to hack into or rip off businesses and the naive public alike. Gov.UK issued a press release on September 25, 2015, headlined, Carbon Credit Company Director Hit with 15-Year Disqualification for Involving His Company in Investment Scam, which discusses young Eremuse, the director of the London Carbon Credit Limited, who has been disqualified from selling carbon credits for 15 years for dishonest practices. And when there is fraud or a good scam, you know that the Clintons cannot be far behind. On his own website, Eramuse boasts that London Carbon Credit Company is pleased to announce that it will soon be able to offer its clients carbon credits from Bill Clinton's Clinton Climate Initiative, part of the Clinton Foundation. In August 2015, the BBC posted an article headlined, Carbon Credits Undercut Climate Change Action, says report. It reads, the vast majority of carbon credits generated by Russia and Ukraine did not represent cuts in emissions, according to a new study. The authors say that the offsets created under a UN scheme significantly undermined efforts to tackle climate change. The credits may have increased emissions by 60 million tons. A February 2010 Harper's Magazine cover story, Conning the Climate, covers in detail the entire process of the carbon offset trade, from CDM or Clean Development Mechanism, managed by the UN, the Goldman Sachs, Barclays, and Citibank's carbon trading desk, to the difficult and sometimes impossible procedure of carbon verification through the employment of UN carbon validators. 
The article reports that, as thousands of reductions are claimed worldwide, the project